This is bad. This is very bad. Relax, Lewis. We didn't do anything wrong. As if that matters. Don't you realize who we're dealing with, Lord Trader? Innocence proves nothing. And what about the orc? Didn't I tell you he'd be trouble? Gorgak sighed, shifting his muscly arms, listening to the armor of his shoulder plates clank and crash. Once again, the seneschal git was namby pambying about, acting like a grot who had lost the boss's slugger. The orc shook his head. Things bad uns then, boss. The rogue trader spun around, his face wearing a dazzling white smile. His scarlet coat whipped through the air, still ripped and torn from the scrap. Gorgax frowned. He could reckon the boss's moods well enough by now, and the boss seemed tense. Even though he was smiling, there was muscle tension in his jaw and a hardness behind his eyes. Don't you worry about that, he told Gorgax. The important thing, Gorgax, is that you mustn't fight them. Do you understand? No crumping them, no matter how annoyed you get. The Seneschal paced up and down, his laces and frills quivering with every movement. He played with a coin between his fingers, the gold snaking up and down the width of his hand. Gorgax, he said with some hesitation. They shall be looking for any excuse to kill you. You mustn't give them any reason. The rogue trader nodded, still wearing that fake, confident smile. Lewis is right, Gorgax. I need you on your best behavior. The bestest! That's right. You got it, boss! The same goes for you, Lord Trader, the Seneschal added. A bead of sweat was running down the side of his head, and he wiped at it with a frilly handkerchief. Oh, I get the same pep talk as Gorgax! Well, the Seneschal muttered, you can be a little proud, Clintus. The rogue trader laughed, and this time Gorgax thought it was genuine. Don't worry, Lewis. I know who we're dealing with. Speaking of which, the Seneschal replied, from the decor, I think I know precisely who we're dealing with. Gorgax glanced around. The holding room was mostly empty, containing two locked doors, a steel bench built into the walls, and a small, prim Aquila neatly hanging on a grey wall. How's that? The Seneschal ignored the question. I'd guess Ritter, Lord Trader. And what do we know about Ritter? The Seneschal swallowed. Puritanical, direct, with a reputation for seriousness. Please don't make any jokes with him, Clintus. You can tell all that from the decor. It could be someone we don't know. However, if we do know him, I'd guess Ritter. Impressive, Lewis. The Seneschal shuffled on the spot. Well, thank you, Lord Trader. There was a loud clicking noise, the sound of a heavy bar being lifted, and then one of the doors shuddered open. Two stormtroopers in black carapace entered the room, the eyes of their helmets glowing red. One of them stepped forward. The orc! Gorgax glanced to the rogue trader who nodded back. Remember, Gorgax, bestest behavior. Subject K74C.4 Xenos slash Gorgax. 1804 Local 593008M42 Thought of the moment. There is no end to the abomination of the alien. Sid. Do you refuse to talk, Orc? I'll talk to you. What do you want? Remove your hat. Why? Remove your hat, Xenos. You can't have it! Tell me about the events of earlier today. For the record, approximately 1330-593-008-M42. Huh? You attacked General Hightower. Oh yeah, that! <laughs> well, when I got my eyes on the noggin bumps, I know that it was time for a scrap. So I put my hook in his noggin, and it went right through. And I was trying to shake his noggin off me hook, when more of the git showed up. Most went down easy like. I snazzed a few of them up with my snazzy slugger, and the boss got the crump into rest. But that's when the real worthy gripply dropped down from the roof. And because I'm surrounded by pansies, I think that the Gribbly was going to be mine to kill. Wait, stop. Slow down. Tell me how it began. How what got started? <sighs> I understand there was a business about a hat. Oh, that's what you want to know. Why didn't you say so? <laughs> well, I got me a new hat. Real snazzy, don't you think? 
proper flash. Custom job. The boss got it for me because I'm the bestest and because he's got lots of teeth. Picked out the feather myself. Job's a good one. You can't have it though. Get your own, you git. Call me a git again and I'll have you executed, Xenos. And for the record, I do not want anything your filthy hands have touched. That ain't very nice. But I've been told not to crump you, so I'll let it go. Tell me about the General's hat. What about it? Are you playing with me, Orc? You removed the General's hat. Why? Well, I was being cunning, see? Because I think there was something weird going on. So I let him try on me hat. But only if he would let me try on his, yeah? And cause me hat's proper flash. I knew that he only wouldn't do it if I was right. Right about what? Right about the bumps on his noggin! You mean the ridges on his forehead? That's what I said, yeah! You knew that General Hightower was contaminated? Well, I think it, but I wasn't sure. That's why I came up with the cunning plan. I'm proper cunning. I don't understand. What plan? I already told ya! Get your listening gear around what I'm saying! I said he could try me at it but only if he let me have a go with his. You see? You offered to trade hats. This was your plan. Yeah, that's right. Because I knew me hat was way flasher, I knew that he would only say no if he was sneaking the noggin' bumps. Did you not consider that an officer of the Astra Militarum might refuse your offer on some other basis? What do you mean? No loyal officer would want to wear anything contaminated by the taint of your Xenos flesh. But have you seen me at it? It's proper flash! Proper big, ain't it? And with the feathers, one red for what going faster, and one blue for good luck. It's the best as that there is, I reckon. So even if he don't like the orc so much, I think he'd still want that for himself. Does the rogue trader wear this hat? Nah. It's mine. He can't have it neither. Has he asked to wear the hat? <laughs> yeah, but he ain't getting it. I ain't stupid. He won't give it back. Let's move on. So, when General Hightower didn't accept the hat exchange, your brutish suspicions were confirmed. What did you do next? I think he was probably a gribbly. I wasn't sure. So I knocked his hat off with me hook. You knocked off his hat? That's right. And how did General Hightower respond? Well, I could see he was a gribbly. So then it was time for the scrap. He kinda did a weird warpy war. And then the other gits did the same warpy war. And by then, I had me hook in his noggin, like what I told you. And what did the rogue trader do? The boss. Yes. Well, he could see that they were gribblies too, so he got stuck in with that snazzy chopper of his, the one that's blue for good luck in there. And he ate rubbish at it, I suppose. We wrecked them right quick, but they kept zogging, showing up. And then the proper gribbly drops from the roof, like I says. Describe this, gribbly. Well, he's a proper gribbly. Got four arms, each and proper hurty. You know. A gribbly! Weird eyes that make me sleepy. And lots of teeth like snicket stabbers. And dead hard in a dust up. Not that I was scared or nothing. I love me a good scrap. I suppose you attacked it then. Yeah? <laughs> but he was on me first. Dead proper fast. All his stabbers went for me guts. But it's mostly whatnots down here. So though he carved me up. It did not so bad. I hit him to the face with me noggin, and that hurt a bit, but he didn't seem to like it neither. And then I follow up with me hook. And cause he's dizzy, I nick him to the side, but he's still too quick for more than that. So you fought it? Yeah. Shame how it ended. How did it end? With that Nambi Pambi killing it dead. You mean Seneschal Lewis Peruso? Huh. Yeah. It was a lucky shot is all. I don't want to talk about it. I was just distracted because of the Gribbly's weird eyes. 
We don't have to talk about it. I don't need a blow-by-blow -blow account of the combat. Good! What I want to know is this. Why did you suspect General Hightower was contaminated in the first place? Ah, oh, well, he smelled weird. And I'm a clever Scragger. What does Scragger mean, Orc? Um, like, a boy that's been around for zonks. A veteran. A Scragger, yeah. You recognize the contamination from the scent? Hmm, yeah. What did it smell like? Um, like it was weird. Weird? How? I don't know. Weird. <sighs> Very well. Guards, escort the Xenos back to the holding room. I'll speak to the rogue trader next. Subject case 74 slash C. 1.4 Nobilis slash Clintus Vanderlind. 1833 local. 593 008M42. Thought of the moment. He who allows the alien to live shares in the crime of its existence. Well met, Inquisitor. It is Inquisitor, I presume. Do you routinely keep the company of Xenos? <laughs> Straight to it, I see. Perhaps you will answer the question. Of course, well, the answer is yes, but only Xenos of the sanctioned kind. No doubt you've had time to read over the charters. Yes, your papers are in order. Signed by members of the Ecclesiarchy, you'll note. By Cardinal Herod, among others. Yes, indeed. I have had business with Cardinal Herod. He is no longer with us. A great shame, I'm sure. The Emperor will judge him now, as it should be. You admit that you keep the company of Xenos, then? The sanctioned Xenos, yes. You seem to keep forgetting that word. That word matters to you? Why, of course. It is difference between grace and damnation, Inquisitor. I have always had great respect for the Lex Imperialis. I agree with Judge Othniel that the Lex is sacred. An interesting philosophy for a rogue trader. Oh, I've always found it entirely compatible with my duties. After all, the Lex Imperialis only applies in Imperial space. You would have me believe that you engage in criminality only outside Imperial space. Not at all. Outside of Imperial space, there is no such thing as criminality at all. Perhaps you will concede that there is such a thing as a heretic or a traitor. Oh, quite so. Though the Lex limits itself to within the borders of the Imperium, the Imperial Creed is universal to all planets and places. I seem to remember that one tenet is not to suffer the alien to live. Oh yes, indeed. You don't see the conflict. I have found that keeping Gorgax around is often the most effective way of destroying the alien Inquisitor. Without him, I would be dead, and many Xenos would still be living. Hmm. You are quick-witted. I am trained by the best. Fine. Enough sparring. As you wish, Inquisitor. It is Inquisitor. Lewis seems to think you are a man by the name of Ritter. Does he? How curious. Oh, it's his business to know that kind of thing. Through what channels does he learn such things, I wonder? That's not relevant. You should leave him out of this. I think not. He's done nothing wrong. I will decide that. Yes, of course. Innocence proves nothing, I'm sure. Do I detect sarcasm in your voice? You might. It depends on your level of perceptiveness. It seems I've touched a nerve. My apologies, rogue trader. I might be detecting some sarcasm as well. It seems we are both perceptive. Now, to the matter at hand. Tell me about the events of earlier today. For the record, approximately 1330-593-008-M42. What precisely do you want to know? Just a general account. We'll start there. I was visiting General Hightower with my Seneschal Lewis and my militant Gorgax. The General was in the field, approximately five miles from the front, so it behoved me to visit him in his tent. Vox traffic is unreliable, 
apparently with regards to both security and audibility. I was there to discuss with him the transport of certain high-grade munitions from the Adamus sector to the Midas Reach. My ships can handle more dangerous loads and are more reliable with the Immaterium than other ships across the Reach. I, in what manner are they more reliable? In the quality of the crew, predominantly. No technical improvements. Some, all of which are entirely legal and cost me a great deal of money. I'd appreciate you not adding to my overheads with unnecessary audits. I will consider it. Proceed with your account. Well, we met General Hightower in his field tent. Various attachés were present, all of which turned out to be Xenos infiltrators. You know, you should really be thanking me and could proceed with your account. Our discussion was rather dull. We engaged in a little bit of small talk, and then I let Lewis sort out the particulars. Did you notice anything strange about General Hightower? Nothing at all. He'd always been a terrible bore. He insisted on telling me about the state of the war in tedious detail. It doesn't seem to be going very well, by the way. I do remember that he had a spot of food on his chin that quivered every time he spoke. It was awfully distracting. I think I was mostly focused on that. Don't give me that look, Inquisitor. This was a very routine meeting. I had done my due diligence and my job was simply to start negotiations from a pleasant footing. I could have performed my task half concussed. You had met General Hightower before. Yes, I'm afraid he seemed entirely the same. You know, I don't know much about this business. How does the gene stealer contamination work? Did I ever know the man? Or was he always a Xenos? The matter is classified. You mean you don't know? I mean that it is classified. Proceed with your account. Well, there's not much more to it if I'm being entirely honest. I certainly didn't notice the gene stealer on the ceiling. Oh, there's one thing that I found a little strange. His attachés never seemed to be listening, but they were never caught out by a question or comment. I thought it odd. It was as if they were making a show of not paying attention. Even though it was obvious that they were, at the time I thought it some kind of inane power play. Military men can be like that sometimes. They think that every negotiation is like two groks butting heads. I suppose his people were also rather emotionless. Monotone, you know. But, as I said, it was a frightfully dull conversation. I wasn't exactly expecting great excitement in the room. And of course, they were all wearing military caps. That became relevant after the fact. What about your orc? Yes, well, I always keep one eye on him. He kept sniffing, like he didn't like the smell. I gave him a look one time. I was worried it was starting to seem rude. And he stopped for a bit, then started again. He's quite perceptive for an orc, but he gets distracted. And then the Greenskin attacked General Hightower. Attacked is a strong word. He asked if they might exchange hats. That also surprised me. Gorgax loves his new hat. It seemed out of character for him, so I was on edge. How did the general respond to the orc's offer? Oh, how you might expect, really. First, he seemed confused. Then he seemed rather angry, going on about how this was entirely irregular and how he had never been so insulted in his life. He certainly didn't find it funny. But you did. Oh, yes. Don't you find it funny, Inquisitor? No. I suppose you're not allowed to have a sense of humor. No more sparring. Proceed with your account. Very well. After his offer was refused, Gorgax knocked off the general's hat and we could all see the forehead ridges. The general's face lost all emotion and then he let out this horrendous, high-pitched shriek. Then his people made the same noise. <laughs> Gorgax went, Aha! Or something like that and then he drove his hook through the general's head. What were you thinking in that moment? Well, my first thought was that General Hightower was a mutant. The Xenos consideration didn't come into a little later. In any case, it was quite evident that we were in for a fight. I drew my sword. One of them was trying to bludgeon me, you see. If I do say so myself, I pulled off quite the elegant riposte. We were making short work of them, but then the gene stealer dropped from the ceiling. How did you know it was a gene stealer? Because I am educated. A small mind is easily filled with faith. 
then I suppose it took a little more work to fill my mind with faith, Inquisitor. The priestly tutors were certainly very expensive, but this seems like an unnecessary tangent. Should I proceed with my account? Fine. When the gene stealer dropped from the ceiling, Gorgax took it on himself to deal with it. By then, most of the people in the tent were dead, but more were filling in. I took a position by the entrance to hold them off. Weren't you concerned that those outside the tent were uncontaminated, and that you'd be forced to kill loyal servants of the Imperium? Oh, I was yelling all manner of persuasive things about there being Xenos inside the tent, and that we were all handling it. Most of the nearby soldiers hesitated and held back. I killed those that didn't. You didn't feel conflicted. Oh, these lot were doing that ungodly shriek as they rushed me. I didn't feel too bad about it. After a minute or so, the Xenos were dead, and someone sensible had set up a firing line. Given that I don't enjoy being shot to death, I lowered my weapons and started negotiations. I spoke to Captain Rebecca Peters, who seemed vaguely sympathetic to my cause. She didn't order me shot in any case. I suppose she, or one of her people, contacted you. How did the pure strain die? I didn't see it exactly. The orc, I expect. Very well. That'll do for now. May I ask you a question? If you must. Why did you talk to Gorgax first? I am in the habit of ordering my daily tasks from most unpleasant to least. Gorgax? Me? Then Lewis? <laughs> I don't disagree with the ordering. Guards. Escort the rogue trader back to the holding room, and send in the seneschal. I don't suppose you could bring us some dinner. Guards! Subject, case 74 slash C. 1.5, Nobilis slash Louis Peruso, 1846, local. 593-008-M42. Thought of the moment. Innocence proves nothing. Lord Inquisitor. What do you think of your master? Pardon me? The rogue trader. What is your opinion? Rogue trader Clintus Vandalin is an exemplary Imperial servant. He has brought great wealth to the Imperium, expanded its borders considerably, and contributed to many of its military efforts against the heretic, the Xenos, and the damned. I have a very high opinion of him. And what about the company he keeps? The Lord Trader has always obeyed the Lex Imperialis in all his dealings. You approve, then, of his Xenos pet? It is not my role to approve or disapprove of the Lord Trader's decisions. You are his seneschal. You don't advise him on his decisions. I advise the Lord Trader before those decisions have been made. It would be quite improper for me to question those decisions after the fact. Very well. Then tell me what advice you gave him when he was considering recruiting the Orc. Seneschal, I asked you a question. I... I advised the Lord Trader against it. Why? Because it was a Xenos. Indeed. You had moral objections. It is not my role to voice moral objections. For this, the Lord Trader has a confessor. I was concerned that the recruitment of a Xenos might result in loss of business. Because loyal servants of the Emperor would not deal with him. Quite so. As it is, I was mistaken. It transpires that coin is more persuasive. A sad fact. Not from the perspective of the Lord Trader's business enterprises, Lord Inquisitor. Indeed. And what about your own personal thoughts on the matter? Regarding the recruitment of the Orc? Yes. I may have had some reservations about it. Speak to them. Lord Inquisitor, this was some time ago. My memory is quite hazy. I don't recall my exact thoughts on the matter. Perhaps you will speculate to them, then. I don't recall. I see. Perhaps you recall the events of earlier today. For the record, approximately 1330-593-008-M42. I do. Speak to those recollections. Due to complications with Vox traffic, we are forced to conduct business with General Hightower in person. Coordinates 740-102-931 on the world of Verita. Our business related to the traffic of class LF2 munitions, primarily atmospheric incinerator torpedoes and high-grade plasma weaponry. We travelled via the Lord Trader's personal Aquila lander and took an auto carriage for the final leg of the journey. 
The Lord Trader made introductions and reached a general agreement with General Hightower. In exchange for 12 billion gelt, we would deliver the full manifest from the Adamus sector across 18 war zones in the Midas Reach. Should I go into detail regarding the manifest, Lord Inquisitor? That won't be necessary. Once the Lord Trader had reached the general agreement of trade, it was my responsibility to sort out the particulars. Tax credits for the provision of crusade armaments, fueling and docking fees, turnover of crew after each warp jump, and so on. Were such amounts significant, given the amount of 12 billion at issue? Highly significant. Numerous ships would have to be employed, each with tens of thousands of crew and requiring high tonnage of supplies and fuel. Recruitment from natural attrition can be expensive, especially given the Lord Trader's requirements of prior experience and high levels of competence. Tax credits can be excessively gouging depending on the system. My efforts protected 11.4% of the Lord Trader's profits from the arrangement. Fine. Who are you negotiating with? The General, which I found to be unusual. Occasionally he would ask a question of his staff, but it seemed to be for show. I believe he already knew the answer to each query. You would have expected the General to have a dedicated seneschal or the equivalent. Quite so, Lord Inquisitor. As it was, he seemed to have no one fulfilling that role among his general staff. Was anything else unusual? I noticed a few things. I knew that General Hightower was partial to vintage Amasek from the Macarius sector, but I saw no evidence of any such bottles in his field tent. Indeed, there was no Amasek in the tent at all. Only bottled water. He also had a food stain on his chin that corresponded to low-grade rations. More generally, I had expected more lavish conditions. Everything was entirely functional and standard issue, from the table, to the chairs, to the fabric of the tent itself. The field tent was relatively close to the front line. Was it so surprising that it was solely functional? I suppose it was not surprising enough for me to realize that anything was wrong. But I did take note of it. As I say, General Hightower had a reputation for enjoying the finer things in life, and I know that he was of considerable means. You seem well acquainted with reputations. It is my job. Lord Inquisitor. Do you know who I am, then? I believe you are Inquisitor Ritter. What makes you think that? The decor, Lord Inquisitor. You have a reputation for functionality and neatness. Furthermore, the militancy on display is consistent with your reputation. From the stormtroopers that picked us up to the armor you are now wearing for this interrogation. What else is this Inquisitor Ritter known for? Puritanism, Lord Inquisitor. Hmm. And how did you learn about Inquisitor Ritter's reputation? I don't recall. Of course. So you were engaged in commercial discussions with General Hightower. What happened then? Well, then Gorgak starts talking about hats. Why does the Xenos have a hat? I... I don't recall. Is the rogue trader in the habit of giving gifts to Xenos? The Lord Trader obeys the Lex Imperialis in all his dealings, Lord Inquisitor. So you said. Proceed with your account. Gorgax offered to exchange hats with General Hightower. It was an unwelcome interruption to our commercial discussions, and I informed Gorgax as such. However, he was very, very persistent. General Hightower refused the exchange. At that point, Gorgax removed the General's military cap, exposing General Hightower as a gene stealer cultist. You recognize the forehead ridges as a sign of gene stealer infestation. Well, that is correct, Lord Inquisitor. And why are you so well informed about gene stealer infestation? I don't recall. <sighs> Continue then. Well, everything went to hell soon after. General Hightower let out an unearthly sound, and his attaches responded in kind. Gorgak slew General Hightower immediately, and combat was joined. Gorgax and the Lord Trader did most of the fighting. I took up a defensive position behind a chair, armed with my pistol. But it was difficult to get a clear shot. Rather than risk my companions, I maintained a tactical readiness. Tell me about the pure strain, Gene Stealer. None of us had noticed it was there, or indeed how it managed to hold on to the ceiling of a tent without the fabric ripping or sagging. It seemed to identify Gorgax as the primary threat and tore out the majority of his stomach. Fortunately, Gorgax is used to having his stomach ripped out. I understand. You killed the pure strain yourself. Yes. Gorgax was fighting with the gene stealer. I wasn't sure who was winning, but then Gorgax froze, as if held in position on marionette strings. I called out to him, but he was unresponsive. 
The gene stealer had fixed him in some sort of hypnotic gaze. Fortunately, the gene stealer was advancing on Gorgax quite slowly. From my position of tactical readiness, I took my shot and killed it with the last round to the left eye. <sighs> By this time, the Lord Trader was explaining the situation to uncontaminated members of the Astra Militarum, and we were able to put away our weapons. Very well. I want to return to the matter of the Orc. I notice that you use the pronouns he, him, rather than it. Do you consider yourself to have a rapport with this Xenos? Rapport is not the word I would use. I am simply more accustomed to his presence. Seneschal, we have spoken of reputations. Your reputation is one of propriety. No doubt you chafe at being associated with a Xenos, regardless of its sanctioned status. Let me put this another way. I empathize with the difficulty of your position, Lewis. You wish to remain loyal to your master. However, taking steps to safeguard his soul may be the greater act of loyalty. Do you understand me? I believe I follow your reasoning, Lord Inquisitor. The best way to safeguard Clintus Vandalin's soul is to help me keep an eye on him. Understand, I don't want to interfere. I simply want to make sure that his actions benefit mankind and the Emperor, whom is beloved by all. No doubt you are hesitant. I wish to make the decision easier for you. Do this for me, for the rogue trader's soul, and I will have the orc destroyed. I will suffer the rogue trader's ire, and you will be free of the Xenos embarrassment for good. Well, do we have a general agreement? Lord Inquisitor? We do not. This is a one-time offer, Seneschal. If you say no to me, you'll be stuck with that orc until you or it dies. You and the rogue trader will be damned by its presence, and you will have personally earned my displeasure. Lord Inquisitor, if I may, if you truly believe that the Xenos was so dangerous to our souls, you would destroy the orc without asking for something in return. You think I lack the authority? Of course you have the authority. It's all the more telling. You do not want to weather the political backlash of upsetting the Lord Trader, without first knowing you can exert control on him through me. Your authority in principle is infinite, Lord Inquisitor, but in practice it is limited by politics and coin. Otherwise you would not need my assistance. I swore to the God Emperor to remain loyal to the Lord Trader. I would not make assurances to you that risk my pact to the Master of Mankind. As a man of principle, I hope you will understand. And for the record, Lord Inquisitor, the Orc is really not so bad, once you grow accustomed to the smell. I was mistaken about you, Seneschal. You are already corrupted. I am sorry you feel that, Lord Inquisitor. Are we concluded in our business? We are. Guards, take him out of my sight and set them all loose. We're done here. Goodbye for now, Seneschal. I'm sure we'll cross paths again. I look forward to it, Lord Inquisitor. Gorgax glared at the sun ashore as the shuttle shuddered loose from the cruiser's gravitational pull. The git seemed more square-jawed than usual, his lips tight and almost pursed. For once, he wasn't complaining apparently lost in his umi thoughts. It was downright suspicious. He dumped us in, the orc complained. The rogue trader looked up at Gorgax from the bench. The boss seemed different too. For the first time ever, he seemed tired. No, Gorgax, he didn't. How'd you know? Because you are alive, Gorgax. Pah! He didn't look so killy. Would have gone and crumped him if you weren't such pansies about him. The rogue trader smiled. That's not how it works, Gorgax. He's... Cunning, the Seneschal finished. He fixed Gorgax in a stare. Ah, Gorgax said, shifting uncomfortably. The Seneschal was acting proper weird. So he wasn't really there. It was all an illusion. No, I'm quite certain he was there, the rogue trader said. The Seneschal nodded. To put it in a way you'll understand, that's a scrap that doesn't end, Gorgax. You kill an Inquisitor, and you are hunted day and night for the remainder of your inevitably short life. Sounds good! 
No, Gorgax, the rogue trader said, because they would cheat. You wouldn't get to scrap at all. You'd be killed while you slept or slipped a poison through your food, or you'd be met with such overwhelming force that you wouldn't have time to even lift your chopper. If you say so, boss. The Inquisition is a different animal, Gorgax. If you give them an inch, then they'll take a mile. On the other hand, if your resistance is too forthright, then they tend to dramatically overreact. The key is to obstruct them, but with a light touch and an easy smile. Inquisitor Ritter and I will never exactly be friendly, but today we parted as, well, as mutual nuisances, the Seneschal offered. The rogue trader grinned. Yes, as mutual nuisances, Gorgak shrugged. So why is the kit acting weird? The smile faded from the rogue trader's face. Because Lewis took on a great risk for us, Gorgax, for which we should both be very grateful. The Seneschal sniffed. I don't want your gratitude, Clintus. Did you really think I would do anything different? I never doubted you for a second, old friend. But you have my gratitude regardless. And I'm afraid, like all the other things I do to annoy you, you don't have a choice in the matter. Hmm. Gorgax frowned at the exchange. Humans were so zogging weird. He paced up and down the length of the shuttle, glancing through the viewports to the endless glittering black of ocean space. His peg leg clinked noisily against the corrugated metal of the floor. By the way, Gorgax, the Seneschal said, you're quite welcome. For what? For saving your life. The orc span around in a fury. You what? You didn't do nothing but steal my killing. Oh? You had frozen like a naughty schoolboy before the headmaster. The rogue trader laughed. I'm not quite sure Gorgax will get that reference, Lewis. Oh, you're probably right. Fine. You had frozen like an ice luge in a nobleman's ballroom. I'm not sure that's much better. Shut it! I had everything under control. Also, your hat looks ridiculous. There, I said it. You what? It's the bestest hat in the old zogging galaxy. It's... Gauche. Boss, tell him to stop cheating with gumps that don't make no sense, or I'll crump the git up and proper. No crumping the git, Gorgax. And stop letting him wind you up, he's only teasing you. Hmm. Well, all that frilly gump he's got on are Namby Pamby. I'll have you know that these frills cost more than a month's salary. The Lord Trader's coat, on the other hand. You come for my coat, Lewis. I'll come for those ridiculous pointed shoes you wear. It is the newest fashion on terror. No, it is a practical joke on you. Gorgax chuckled, his shoulder plates clanking nice and loud. What are you laughing about? The Seneschal asked peevishly. The orc grinned toothily. Could I just got it? We're mucking about, just like the lads. The rogue trader laughed. You know what, Gorgax? I think we are. God Emperor save us. The shuttle continued its journey through the void of space, breaking through the fire-licked atmosphere of the world below. Gorgax watched as the glittering black transformed to muddy brown. He felt content. He was with the boys, and they were going to a war zone. Their next proper crumpin' was just around the corner.